Hi, this is James Tanner, and this video is being presented by the Brigham Young University Family History Library on the BYU campus. We're going to talk today about moving images from Ancestry.com to FamilySearch.org. But this particular process applies to many other programs and websites. Before we get started, I need to make a mention about copyright restrictions that may, that may apply to the images that you see online. In the United States, the copyright law is quite complicated, but it, today, simply, any image put online has the potential of being under, uh, subject to a copyright claim. And it's always a good idea to check the copyright status of any image before using it online. And my counsel is if you're not sure about the copyright status, don't use it. Now, there are time limits imposed on a copyright usage. Um, the claims for copyrights expire after a period of time, but those periods of time are uh, fairly complicated. The rule of thumb is that any image made before 1923 uh, would be uh, free from any copyright claims. But this is not always the case. There are some exceptions. There is a rather detailed explanation of the different time limits and uh, uh, how they apply on uh, available from Cornell University. It's called the Cornell Copyright Term in Public Domain in the United States uh, document. And uh, I've put the link up there online, but if you do a search for Cornell copyright uh, chart, you'll find uh, the document readily. This is a good reference material for determining whether or not anything, uh, books or whatever, are still under copyright. Now, the big question is where do the images come from? In both Family Search and in Ancestry, uh, users of the program can upload uh, images. This is also the case with uh, many of the other on-site uh, web, uh, genealogical websites. In the case of Family Search, those images are stored in what's called the Memories section, and uh, the Memory Gallery shows you what images you have uploaded, and the People section uh, of this of the Memories shows you what other images that others have uploaded about your ancestors. And these images have been uploaded by the millions uh, by the users of the programs. Ancestry has a media gallery uh, that is part of uh, your subscription to Ancestry, and that shows photos that you have uh, acquired or stored or moved in from um, any of the other website, any of the other family trees on, uh, on Ancestry. There is a process for uh, adding a photo to your uh, family tree, and that is uh, a little more complicated and probably needs to be addressed in a, in a different presentation. The basic idea for moving an image from one uh, part of the internet to your computer is uh, quite simple. First of all, you right click on the image, uh, however you do this with your computer and uh, your either trackpad or your uh, mouse. And then you save it to your desktop. Uh, here's an example of that, how that happens. If I right click on the image there of Samuel Shepard, I will get a pull down menu. Uh, one of <clears throat> the items in the menu says save image as. When I click on that item, I get a dialog box allowing me to save the image to some place on my computer. I've set my computer to save the images to the desktop because that's the easiest place for me to find them. You need to be concerned about where the, where the file is going uh, on your computer and uh, try that out and get it set up properly before you start saving images because 
Uh, otherwise, they'll just disappear into a pictures file or a, a someplace else on your computer that, that happens to be designated as the place where you save your document. Now, the name that uh, is given by Ancestry isn't, a, isn't very useful, and I would suggest that you may want to edit that name, and you can simply highlight the information that's there and replace it with whatever name you wish to use for uh, designating the, uh, the downloaded image. Now, putting in a different name, your uh, standard, some kind of standardized image name also will, will assist you in finding the image on your computer uh, should it go someplace unexpected. Once again, watch where you save the image. Uh, it, your computer can appear to be a bottomless pit where uh, images just disappear. Um, and it would be a good idea to uh, sort out that issue before you start trying to save images. Once you have the image stored on your computer, and if it was placed on the desktop, then it's a fairly simple, simple matter to go back to the desktop, look at the image, click on it, and upload that image to FamilySearch. You do that by opening the FamilySearch.org website to the memory section and to the gallery, where there is a green plus sign. And clicking on that green plus sign will open up a large area of the screen where you can drag or drop files to upload or create a story. Once the image is uploaded, it's important to tag and title the image. Tagging the image identifies the people in the photo and links those photos to their uh, detail page in the FamilySearch.org family tree. Putting a title on the, on the photo allows the photo to be found and searched. Remember that all of the images that you upload to FamilySearch.org are searchable by Google uh, if they are tagged or titled. So uh, even if they contain pictures of living people, if you tag a dead person, all the living people in the photo will be visible to an online search. There are some alternate methods of uploading photos uh, and acquiring photos, both from Ancestry and from Family Search and from other programs. Uh, there are programs called screen grabbers or screen capture programs including IRF and View Sketch and other programs that incorporate uh, or that are incorporated in your operating system. Both the Windows operating system and the Apple uh, OS X operating system have ways of making screen uh, shots or screen grabs, and those become images that can be uploaded. Uh, in fact, you can do the same thing with a smartphone or uh, a tablet or iPad. Those processes are individual to the uh, particular device that you're using, and so you'll have to uh, look for some instructions online on how to create a screenshot or do a, a screen capture on uh, your particular device. Another alternative method of uh, downloading a photo from Ancestry includes looking, uh, adding the photo to an individual and looking at that individual's gallery. So in this case, uh, there is a photo that I've added to my grandmother, Eva Margaret Overson. I can download that photo now to uh, my desktop from Ancestry.com. I first click on the photo, and then in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little, uh, looks like an X, but it's, a, it's a crossed tools. If I click on the crossed tools, then I have a, an option to download to the desktop, which, would, which is, uh, will do that automatically with that particular photo. And then the next step is um, that this process works with many other programs. So be careful to uh, uh, look for the options that may, that may be available in those programs or in the other, uh, on the other hand, you may need to look for the instructions for how your device captures a screenshot 
or employ a program that does uh, that's called a screen grabber or a or a screenshot program that will um, enable you to to capture photos online. And once again, as we uh, end this particular uh, segment, uh, be cautious of uploading uh, copyrighted materials. If copyrighted materials are added to the FamilySearch.org family tree, uh, then they can be, and someone complains, I suppose, then they will be summarily re uh, removed. So if one of your photos disappears, it may be uh, possible that someone complained that it violated a copyright. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, uh, you can address them to the BYU Family History Library, uh, and we'll uh, try to help you with uh, your particular questions.